Donald Trump today met with an informal group of national security advisors, among them retired general and defense intelligence chief Michael Flynn and former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Around the table, new campaign manager Kellyanne Conway and campaign CEO Steve Bannon. Trump later attended his first classified briefing as GOP nominee. Trump's campaign shakeup puts Bannon, the subject of this Bloomberg business profile, as a powerful, if unkempt, right-wing provocateur near the top of the pyramid. Bannon runs Breitbart News, a conservative website devoted to Trump during the primaries that also bashes the GOP establishment and delights in nationalist and anti-immigration stories. Bannon's role will be to reinforce Trump's own worldview, as he did in this June interview. It's the Republican establishment with Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney. Are they not just as bad as Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama? The Republicans better get smart. They better start sticking together. Romney's a loser. He lost the election badly. Conway is a longtime GOP pollster drawn to sharp-elbowed cultural conservatism. You've got all these little baby girls being killed just because they're girls in this country. But she has never managed a presidential campaign. Conway will travel with Trump. The absence of a powerful advisor on the road has contributed, advisors said, to Trump's many recent gaffes. Conway today said this about new Trump tactics. My own view of the pivot is substance. It's not style. But reading from a teleprompter last night, Trump was characteristically abrasive, lashing out at Hillary Clinton as indifferent to the plight of the urban poor. We reject the bigotry of Hillary Clinton which panders to and talks down to communities of color and sees them only as votes. That's all they care about. So, Major, let's start with this campaign shakeup. How common is it to have these kinds of changes at this point in a presidential campaign? Look, it's incredibly uncommon. There is no precedent, as with so much else with Trump. But here's the important dynamic. Paul Manafort, when he came on, spent a long time looking in his rearview mirror to try to get rid of Corey Lewandowski. And guess what? He succeeded. But as anyone who's been a part of a, any enterprise, business, law firm, political campaign will tell you, anyone who's at the top who spent so much time working on an internal battle and then wins, there's a lot of expended energy and there's a great deal of time that has to be concentrated on reconsolidating an organization after that. Manafort never got there, and when he got rid of Lewandowski, he removed from Trump that which was a significant part of his day-to-day -day centering, if you will. Lewandowski had some flaws, no question about it, and the family talked Trump into getting rid of him. But Lewandowski was exceptional at doing one very important thing for Trump, giving him day-to-day -day guidance, being a sounding board and being someone who could hear Trump say something that he was going to maybe try out on the stump that night and say, you know what, that's pretty good, but let's save that for tomorrow. And by the time tomorrow would come, Trump would have forgotten about it. The lack of that presence on the road has been a conspicuous problem for Trump. So Kellyanne Conway, now the new campaign manager, never managed a national campaign, she'll be traveling with Trump. Why? Because they need someone on the road with him every day. For the last couple of weeks, they've been running in and out surrogates, Rudy Giuliani, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, Reince Priebus. That doesn't work. You need a constant presence. So Manafort won that battle, but he may have lost the larger war over Trump, who's the most important dynamic in this campaign. And with Conway on the road, perhaps because Trump respects her and will listen to her, he may become a more grounded individual as a candidate, and that could help his campaign. Steve Bannon, the head of Breitbart, a slavishly devoted conservative website to Trump in the primaries, will now be channeling their both populist, nationalist, anti-immigration, and hard-edged, crusty conservatism. And that's going to be something where Trump is now telling the Republican establishment, you know what, not only are you people on the outs, you're so far on the outs, a website you view either skeptically or despise is now at the top of my leadership pyramid. Take that, hmm. Republican establishment. Okay, so if Conway is the quote-unquote Trump whisperer, it sounds like. She, she's going to be auditioning for that, certainly. The Trump whisperer. And then you have Bannon, who sounds like he's the messaging attack dog. Where does that leave Paul Manafort? That leaves Paul Manafort on the sidelines, decidedly on the sidelines. He talks today about big picture high concept stuff. There is no big picture high concept stuff anymore. Trump has given the three big tent poll speeches of his campaign on security, on economics, and on change and urban renewal and law and order. 
Is he going to have five, six, seven, eight tent pole speeches? Probably not. Most people I've talked to who think Trump can still win this race believe those three speeches, just reformulate those, hit them constantly on the campaign trail, you'll be fine. So what other high concept stuff is there left for Manafort? Very, very little. So he will be there. He has a titular campaign chief strategist, but his role is diminished. And if these stories about his endeavors in Ukraine continue to crop up and continue to embarrass the campaign, Manafort's position could be even more precarious than it is now. Do we know, I'm curious, where the family stands on all of this? Because Paul Manafort was brought in, correct? By the, By family. the family. Absolutely. By, and, when we, and we say the family, let's be, let's be Ivanka. clear. Ivanka, son Don Jr., son Eric, and Ivanka's husband, Jared Kushner. Um, they are always supportive of Trump first and foremost and are willing to retool the campaign and willing to retool its organization as necessary. To do so so many times in such a short space of time indicates a couple of things. One, they're inexperienced. Two, they understand this is a volatile, volatile situation. And three, they know Trump is losing and has to do something to shake up this reality. They're trying to shake up the reality. Uh, Major, before we let you go, I want to ask you about this. Donald Trump received his first of what could be many classified briefings on Wednesday. He also, though, sat down with his informal national security advisors. What have you found out about that? So meeting? I talked to a couple of people who were at this meeting with mm -hmm. Trump, not the classified not the briefing, classified meeting, no, right. but mm -hmm. the people who support Trump who were there. And this is definitely an informal group. Some are national security and intelligence heavyweights. Some are just members of Congress who are big Trump supporters. Anyway, Conway, Bannon, and Manafort were all there. They all spoke, which meant they all had their own say in the course of this meeting. I am told that they got along well. There was no awkward atmospherics there. Trump drove the meeting, drove the agenda, asked a lot of questions, listened, and then at the end basically put Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, a former New York City mayor, in charge of developing sort of task force-like approaches to certain issues, develop information, bring it to Trump later for subsequent meetings. In the main, Trump was more a listener than a talker, but drove, I'm told, discussion points to a rational, uh, these are obviously Trump supporters, so they perceived it to be rational, conclusions, and put Giuliani kind of at the head of this task force system to get him more information, develop more ideas for national security intelligence going forward. All right. Major Garrett, great to see you in person. Appreciate it. Nice to it. be here.